Good day, dear students and learners. Today, we're going to talk about the structure of words in English. Let's start with the introduction to the start structure of words in English. The structure of words in English is fundamental to understanding the language. It involves the study of morphemes, which are the smallest units of meaning in a word. Morphemes can be further divided into two categories, roots and affixes. Roots are the core part of a word, while affixes are added to the root to change its meaning or function. By learning about the structure of words in English, one can gain insight into how vocabulary is formed and how words are related to each other in the language. Let's talk about the components of English words. And English words have a unique structure consisting of various components. These components are essential to understand the formation and meaning of words in English. The three main components of English words are prefixes, root words, and suffixes. Each component plays a distinct role in shaping the structure and function of words in English. Understanding the structure of words in English is crucial for vocabulary development and language comprehension and acquisition. By recognizing and analyzing word components, individuals can enhance their language skills. Let's talk about the morphology of English words. The structure of words in English, known as the morphology of English words, is a fascinating topic that delves into the formation, structure, and classification of words. Morphology is a study of how words are formed and the relationship between different forms of a word. It explores the internal structure and the meaningful units within words. Understanding the morphology of English words can provide insights into the rules governing world formation, and roots and affixes used, and the changes that occur in word meanings. Let's talk about now word formation processes in English. This process involves several processes such as affixation, compounding, blending, and conversation. Affixation itself is the most common process where prefixes and suffixes are added to the base word. Compounding, on the other hand, involves combining two or more words to create a new word with a unique meaning. And blending combines part of two words to form a new word, such as brunch from breakfast and lunch. Conversation is a process of changing the grammatical category of a word without any morphological change, such as using a noun as a verb like to email or to Google, which are the modern worlds nowadays, which comes out of from like nouns to verbs. When it comes to phonological structure of English words, we can say that English words have a complex phonological structure that includes syllables and phon uh, phonemes. The way words are pronounced and broken down into sounds reflects this structure. The phonological structure of English words plays a crucial role in understanding and producing spoken language. It impacts word stress, rhythm, and even speech disorders. By understanding the phonological structure of English words, language learners can improve their pronunciation and fluency. It's essential for effective communication and language acquisition. The structure of English words is characterized by a combination of letters, digraphs, and various orthographic features. And let's talk about orthography. An orthography is a set of conventions for writing a language, including norms of spelling, hyphenation, capitalization, word boundaries, emphasis, and punctuation. Most transnational languages in the modern period have a writing system, and most of these systems have undergone substantial standardization, thus exhibiting less dialect variation than the spoken language. These processes can fossilize pronunciation patterns that are no longer routinely observed in speech, like would and should, or shall. They can also reflect deliberate efforts to introduce variability for the sake of national identity, as seen in Noah Webster's effort to introduce easily noticeable differences between American and British spelling, like 
honor and honor in American English it is H O N O R and in British English it's spelled like H O N O U R with adding U sound there. Some nations like France and Spain have established language academies in an attempt to regulate orthography officially. For most languages, including English also, no such authority exists and a sense of correct orthography develops through encounters with print in schooling, workplace and informal contexts. Some organizations such as newspapers of record and academic journals choose greater orthographic homogeneity by enforcing a particular style, guide, or spelling standard such as Oxford spelling. Orthographic features include spelling rules, suffixes, prefixes, and the use of capitalization and punctuation in English words. Understanding the orthographic features of English words is essential for effective reading, writing, and communication in the English language. Let's now talk about grammatical categories of English words. In English, words have structured form that consists of grammatical categories. These categories help in understanding the function and meaning of each word. The grammatical categories of English words include parts of speech such as the nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Understanding the structure of words and their grammatical categories is fundamental to mastering the English language and using it effectively in communication and writing. The structure of words in English can be categorized into different lexical categories. These categories include nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and the others. Each category serves a specific purpose in the English language and contributes to the overall structure and meaning of sentences. And now we can move on to derivational mor morphology in English words. And it focuses on the structure and formation of words through affixation, such as adding prefixes and suffixes. This process alters the meaning of grammatical category of the base word, resulting in new words with different meanings and functions. Understanding derivation morphology is crucial for comprehending the complexity and richness of English language lexical and semantic diversity. Inflectional morphology in English words are referred to the changes made to the base form of a word to indicate grammatical categories such as tense, number, case, and comparison. English words often undergo inflectional change through the addition of affixes such as s for plural nouns, ed for past tense verbs, and er for comparative adjectives, and est for superlatives. Understanding the structure of words in English and the principles of inflectional morphology is essential for learners to comprehend and use the language effectively. Word stress patterns in English are closely related to word stress patterns and the structure of words. Understanding these patterns is crucial for achieving correct pronunciation in English. Word stress refers to the emphasis placed on a particular syllable within a word. English words can have different stress patterns such as initial stress, final stress, or secondary stress. By learning and practicing word stress patterns, English language learners can improve their spoken English and develop greater confidence in communicating effectively. Now let's move to syllable structure of English words. In English, uh, syllable structure is based on the structure of words. Syllables are the basic units of pronunciation in a word, and they consist of a vowel sound or a vowel sound with one or more consonant sounds. The syllable structure of English words can vary, but most commonly, it follows a pattern of consonant, vowel, consonant, as we call CVC, or consonant, vowel, consonant, and consonant, as we call them CVCC. 
This structure helps in understanding and pronouncing words correctly. And understanding the syllable structure of English words is important for language learners as it, as it aids in developing clear and accurate pronunciation and also helps in recognizing word boundaries and stress patterns. Now we can move on to compound words in English and they are exactly formed by combining two or more words to create a new word with a different meaning. These words can be made by joining two nouns such as toothbrush or by combining an adjective and noun like blackboard. In toothbrush we have got two uh, words like nouns, tooth and brush, and we have got black like adjective and noun board. And comprehending the structure of compound nouns is important for building vocabulary and improving overall fluency in English language. And we have got compounding here. Compounding forms a word out of two or more root morphemes. The words are called compounds and compound words. The linguistics in linguistic forms. Compounds can be either native or borrowed. Native English roots are typically free morphemes, so that means native compounds are made of independent words that can occur by themselves. For example, mailman, composed of free root male and free root man, or mail carrier, dog house, fireplace, or fire plug, fire plug uh, in regional words for fire hydrant. In Greek and Latin, in contrast to English, roots do not typically stand alone, so compounds are composed of bound roots. Compounds formed in English from borrowed Latin and Greek morphemes preserves this characteristic. Examples include photograph, hydrogenic, and many thousands of other classical words. Note that compounds are written in various ways in English with a space between the elements, with a hyphen between the elements, or simply with the two roots run together with no separation. The way the word is written doesn't affect its status as a compound. Over time, the convention for writing compounds can change, usually in the direction from separate words, like email used to be written with hyphen in the 19th century, Today and tomorrow were sometimes still written with two hyphen day and two hyphen morrow. The two originally was a preposition to with an older meaning at a particular period of time. Clockwork changed to clock hyphen work and finally to one word with no break, like clockwork together. If you read older literature, you might see some compound words that are now written as one word, appearing with unfamiliar spaces or hyphens between the com components. And here we can talk about derivations. Derivation is a creation of words by modification of a root without the addition of other roots. Often the effective is a change in part of speech. For example, the word teach can be changed by adding the suffix er to form the word teacher, which means one who teaches. Similarly, the word comfort can be modified by adding the prefix un to, uh, to form uncomfortable, meaning not comfortable. Derivation includes affixation and suffixation. So, the most common type of derivation is the addition of one or more suffixes to a root, as in the word derivation itself. This process is called affixation, a term which covers both prefixation and suffixation. Blending is one of the most beloved of word formation processes in English. It's especially creative in that speakers take two words and merge them based not on morpheme structure, but on sound structure. The resulting words are called blends. Usually in word formation, we combine roots or affixes along their edges. One morpheme comes to an end before the end one starts. For example, we form derivation out of the sequence of morphemes D, 
rave at ION. One morphine follows the next and each one has identifiable boundaries. The morphemes do not overlap, but in blending, part of one word is stitched onto another word without any regard for where one morpheme ends and another begins. For example, the word swooshtika, Nike swoosh as a logo symbolizing corporate power and hegemony, was formed from swoosh and swastika. The swoosh part remains whole and recognizable in blend, but the tika part is not a morpheme, either in the word swastika or in the blend. The blend is a perfect merger for form and also of content. The meaning contains an implicit analogy between swastika and a swoosh, and thus conceptually blends them into one new kind of thing, having properties of both, but also combined properties of neither source. Other examples include glitterati, blending glitter and literati, Hollywood social set, like mockumentary, mock and documentary, which means spoof documentary. Prefixation is a process of adding a prefix to a base word in English. A prefix is a group of letters added to the beginning of a word to change its meaning. In English, there are many common prefixes such as RE, UN, PRE, and MIS. These prefixes can be added to a base word to create a new word with a different meaning. Comprehending prefixation and important for understanding the structure of English words and expanding your vocabulary. It allows for more flexibility and creativity in communication. English words are structured with suffixes to change their meaning, function or form. Suffixation is a process of adding these meaningful units to the end of a base word. Suffixes can modify the part of speech of a word, such as changing a noun to an adjective or verb to a noun. They can also indicate tense plurality or comparison. Understanding suffixation in English is crucial for vocabulary expansion and comprehension. It allows speakers to grasp the intricacies of word formation and use words effectively in communication. And now we can talk about roots and affixes in English words. Morphemes, minimal units of meaning, are of two basic kinds, roots and affixes. While there is not an absolutely sharp dividing line between them, due to the natural, gradual historical progression from root to affix, there are various properties that typically cluster together, thus allowing us to distinguish the two types. For most morphemes, it's clear which class they belong in. For example, properties of roots, they can be main part of word, must be the last one in a word in English, limited to two in a word. Simple words have one, compound words have two. Where roots are bound, as in Latin or Greek, more can occur in a word, but the number of roots in a particular word is generally small. They can occur independently. Free roots, also bound roots, particularly classical, they can occur tend to have richer, more specific semantic content. Their position is uh, relatively free with respect to other roots, like photograph, telephoto. And when it comes to properties of affixes, they are subordinate part of word they are not necessarily present. Some words occur without any multiple affixes can occur in a word, like indivisibility and dependent elements, where dependent, independent form found generally to some degree dissociates uh, from the bound version, have more schematic or non-specific content. Often grammar-like function can either precede or follow their roots like prefixes and suffixes, and respectively. Position for a given affix with respect to root is fixed. To sum up, a root is the main part of a word that carries its core meaning. An affix, on the other hand, is a group of letters attached to the beginning, prefix or end suffix. 
of a word to modify its meaning or create a new word altogether. Understanding the structure of words in English includes root, affixes is, uh, is essential for developing vocabulary and grasping the intricate nature of language. And here we have got function words, a third type of linguistic element, uh, which is a function word, which occurs in certain languages like English, which don't have much bound morphology. That is, languages with lots of free morphemes instead of mostly words with roots and attached bound morphemes. In such languages, many grammatical functions are served by function words. Small units that have some independence, occurring with more freedom of position than affixes. Thus, they are somewhat root-like, but which have grammar-like meaning rather than concrete lexical content, which makes them more affix-like. Some function words in English are the, a, he, she, it, if, also, and etc. Function words can be thought of as writing between roots and affixes. Prepositions like English over, in, through are sometimes classed as function words and sometimes as roots because they are again intermediate. In form, they are free from morphemes. In terms of function, they have especially in their special meanings more concrete lexical content than most grammatical elements. But their meaning is still rather abstract and relational. Note that in Greek and Latin, the elements corresponding to the English prepositions are bound morphemes rather than free function words. These are special prefixes such as circum, meta, sub, and etc. Now let's move to etymology. Etymology is a study of word origins and it plays a crucial role in understanding the evolution of English vocabulary. Words in English come from diverse sources such as Latin, Greek, French, and Germanic languages. Exploring the etymology of English words can enrich our language skills and deepen our appreciation for the richness and diversity of English language. It offers a fascinating glimpse into the cultural and historical influences that have shaped our vocabulary. Challenges in analyzing the structure of English words are can present significant challenges when it comes to analyzing the composition of English vocabulary. One of the main difficulties lies in the multiple variations in word forms and the complex system of affixes and inflections. When examining the structure of English words, it's essential to consider the intricate interplay between roots, prefixes, and suffixes. This complexity can make it challenging to uh, identify and categorize the different components that make up a word. Furthermore, the diverse origins and historical influences on English vocabulary contribute to the intricate nature of word structure analysis. Understanding the etymology of word is crucial for deciphering their structural complexities. By this, our lesson dedicated to the structure of English words is over. Nice to see you here and goodbye.